I'd like to make just a few comments on this clip that I just recently uploaded about, or from James White, um, <clears throat> where he says that the Bible does not teach that man has a free will to accept or reject the Christian faith. Okay, so right out of the gate, he comes out with this uh, bold-faced lie. Um, you know, just really quick, the Bible does not teach that man has a free will to accept or reject the Christian faith. <laughs> Um, I got this from a debate, you know, James White's done many debates, and it's a debate with a, a Catholic, and the Catholic's defending free will. So, <laughs> it's like, in this case, you know, um, you know, Catholicism's so bad and so far out there, but yet, uh, Calvinism is too. Because, you know, James White's saying that the Bible teaches that men don't have a free will, and then here's a Catholic saying that men do have a free will. Um, of course, the Catholic's wrong about many other things. And But anyways, so James White's defending his position. He comes straight out with this. The Bible does not teach that man has a free will. Or the Bible teaches that man does not have a free will. And cannot accept or reject the Christian faith. And so instantly, anybody who is not a Calvinist, this should like ring alarm bells in your head. And you should say, well, wait a minute, doesn't, doesn't Jesus say, you know, believe the gospel and, and, um, and Joshua, you know, choose whom you will serve? Um, you know, over and over and over again, you know, there's calls to trust in God, to follow God, to believe in God. So if natural men are incapable of doing this if they don't have a free will and they can't accept or reject the Christian faith, then how do we make sense of all these verses that say to do so? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's obviously the complete opposite of what the Bible teaches, you know, what James White is saying. So that should ring alarm bells in someone's head. And then James White says, well, 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 this sounds, this sounds odd because I'm defending a negative. No, it sounds odd because it's completely false. And it goes against so many passages. It's unbelievable. So then James White says, let me defend it from a positive and say that man is a slave to sin. You know, man is dead in sin. Um, I can't remember what else he says. But, you know, basically he says, you know, man is incapable of... Um, you know, following God's law, and and because so, they must be regenerated. And then, and then, then people are going to be like, "Well, that does sound true." You know, the Bible does say that men are slave to sin. It does say that they're dead in sin. And so, you know, he kind of does this like switch thing where he comes out with this bold face lie, and then he says some things that that are found in the Bible, but he's twisting them. So you know, it's still continuing the lie. Um, it's, it's being even more deceptive, you know, like r when he came out right off the bat, he, he, he comes out, you know, everything's completely shown. He just says, you know, the Bible teaches that man doesn't have a free will, cannot accept or reject the Christian faith. He just says that really fast. Then he comes out with more of like a cloaked, a cloaked version of that, you know, and he's twisting what these verses are teaching. So he's saying that because men are dead in sin, uh, because men are slaves to sin, then they cannot accept or reject the Christian faith. And that's still absolutely false. Okay, he says they must be regenerated. Uh, so, so they must be regenerated in order to accept or reject the Christian faith, okay, or to re accept the Christian faith. So you wonder, it's like, so, so regeneration comes before believing, and it's like, wait a minute, how did I get saved? I thought that I was saved because I trusted in Jesus. I thought that I was saved because I believed in Jesus. He said, and James White would say, no, uh, you believe because you were saved. Well, wait a minute, well, then how did I get saved? When was I saved? Well, you could have been uh, regenerated at birth, you know, because God chose you to be saved. You know, it doesn't make any sense at all. It's turning the gospel on its head. And... And then he says, well, this is all focused on man, so let's, let's rephrase it so it's focused on God. And he pretty much says, like, God can do whatever he wants. So, so it's like, okay, uh, 
So men can't accept or reject the faith. Uh, how do we make sense of all these verses that, that say to believe in Jesus and stuff? Well, I don't know. Whatever. Well, uh, so so God chooses some to be saved and some not to be saved, and there's nothing they can do about it. Well, that seems like an unjust God, which it would be. Uh, but he just says, well, God can just do whatever he wants because God's God. And we just can't argue with that or whatever. Well, I'm sorry, but you've twisted many passages and you have a completely false understanding of the gospel and who God is and, and men and, and everything. So, you know, it's just so deceptive. I hope that you'll listen to that clip and just see if you can decipher it and just and catch that. Because like, it's so fast right off the bat when he comes out with that hardcore, bold-faced lie. And then see how he kind of backtracks and like kind of cloaks it and tries to make it sound more biblical. So, you know, that's how they hook people and stuff with the speech and everything. That's just crazy. Um, I don't know. And, you know, I hear this argument too, because people will ask, you know, if God chooses some to be saved and some to be damned, then, you know, why, why are so, so little chosen to be saved? Why are so many chosen to be damned? Uh, if God could save all, then why doesn't God save all? Um, you know, so why does he just choose some to be saved and choose others to go to hell? And Calvinists like James White would say, well, I think that it's amazing that God chooses any to be saved. Why doesn't he just have all go to hell? <laughs> and that's just a stupid argument, okay? That just doesn't work. Because if there were like 10 people here right in front of me right now that were dying and I could save them, I would want to save all of them. Okay, it's just, it's in the human's conscience and stuff to, you know, if we're capable of, we would want to save all of them. We would think that God would do that because God is loving and merciful and graceful, right? So why wouldn't God save all? You know, if, if, if there was a news story or something and 10 people could die and somebody could save all of them, but somebody only chose to save some of them, and we read that news article or something, we would say, you know, that's wicked. Why didn't that person save all of them? He, he could have. There was no reason why he couldn't have. It was all in his power to do so, but yet he didn't. He just let them die. Um, you know, we would say, that's that's unjust. That's wicked. That guy, there was something wrong with that guy, you know? Um, so why would we, I mean, we'd have the same standards with God. God wants us to be holy and be like him. Okay, so... And, and there's passages, you know, that says that God is willing that none should perish. And God, you know, if he had, I don't know how the passage goes, but if he had like 99 sheep or whatever and one was lost, like he would, you know, do whatever to get that one that was lost. So, so from these verses, you know, we get this idea, God, you know, he really does want all to be saved. So then we answer you know, are we asked, you know, why, why aren't all saved? Because it's man's choice. Man must choose, okay, to be saved. Man does have a free will, and man must choose. Okay, there is an enabling grace. That's prevenient grace. Lost men, we do need God's, or well, I'm not lost now, I'm saved, but I'm just saying, you know, men in their natural state, they do need an enabling grace. Okay, that's the Holy Spirit wooing them, drawing them to God. And men can reject that. Men must choose to accept or reject that, that drawing from the Holy Spirit, that enabling grace. Okay. But anyways, just listen to that clip and see how much is just packed in there and twisted. And, you know, Calvinism is a huge issue. I think that all the issues that I make you know, that I mark false teachers for are, are huge issues. I mean, I go out and, and I, I, I point out little things that these false teachers that I've marked say too. And so not everything might not be a huge issue, but I think that it needs to be brought to the forefront anyways. But the reason that I, that I mark these people for in the first place, I think are huge issues and Calvinism definitely, definitely is one. And, um, you know, anyways, just go check that out. God bless.